I've been stocking up on variable capacitors for a long time. I think I've mentioned in other videos that I bought out uh, a repair store, bought out their supplies. And I've been looking for a good air variable capacitor tuned crystal radio for a long time. I finally found a, a good design. It's a good starting point for some other things I can try. And so I can finally put all these to use. I kind of pulled them out of my uh, boxes from the uh, storage room. But I thought that before I started building on them, I would go over and share some of the things that I have learned about them over the time. They have some different features. They're really not very difficult to work with, but there are some things you got to know about them or you can build a radio that won't work or won't work very well. Okay, so let's clear this out and we'll get one or two in here and we'll start showing you the differences. We'll start with a simple one and move up to the more complex ones. Let's go over the parts of the capacitor. This is the shaft. They have at least three different types that I know of. This is a splined with a split in it, so it's pretty much round. I've got another one that's just straight up round and you need some kind of a tensioning screw to, uh, to put a knob on that one. And I've got another one. I'll have to put a uh, little picture up here to show you. It's a cutaway. It's just got a flat on the shaft. Um, let's see. So we have the shaft. It comes into here. Now you'll notice that the shaft is touching the body. So the shaft is actually part of the circuit. It comes in here and it touches the movable set of plates like this. So the shaft and the movable plates are one part of the circuit. They're half of the circuit. And in this case, the body has a tab where you would make a connection to it. So that's one side of the circuit. The other side of the circuit are the static plates and we can see those down here. So the movable plates have been rolled out of the way. Static plates are here. And how you connect to the static plates are by these connectors right here. And they should be clear of the frame. I just found one today that, that uh, this is the second one I found where I had to cut away part of this contact because it was touching the frame and shorting out the capacitor. So those should be their own separate circuit. And on the other side, we have something kind of interesting. We have these two screws. Now, when I first saw these, when I was a kid, I thought that the screws were there for mounting wires to. And in fact, no, if you look very closely, these are actually trimmer capacitors. There's a piece of mica. You can see it just right there at the end of the screwdriver that's between two sheets of metal. So it's between this piece of metal right here and another piece of metal that has been tack welded to the frame right here. So you've got another capacitor because there's an insulator in between and you can loosen and tighten these two screws to give yourself more or less capacitance. These are actually in parallel to the uh, capacitor. Now this is a double gang capacitor and that means there are two capacitors in one. You can see this split right here. Yeah. And you can also see that there's two separate connectors here and two separate connectors over here. Now electrically, this one and this one over here are the same and this one and this one are the same. So again, you have two capacitors here and they're operating jointly. So when one moves, the other moves. When one goes up in value, the other goes up in value. Um, what else is interesting about that? Oh, the trimmer capacitors operate individually also. So this trimmer capacitor is for this bank and this trimmer capacitor is for this bank. Now, the, um, there are single bank uh, capacitors, although I'm out of them right now. I used the last one in a radio a while back and it's they look just like this uh i'll let me put a picture up right here of one and instead of having this gap it's just all one capacitor there'll be four uh, leads because they use these for mounting in the board but they'll all be electrically connected and then of course uh, the rotor plates are always uh, the, the movable plates are always connected together um what else okay there will be mounting holes and you can see I've got some screws in it but there's three one two three and these are typically threaded they're on the front 
uh, the danger here is that can you see that not very well there's not very much clearance between that plate and the static plates of the capacitor or the moving plates either and if you get screws that are too long and you drive them in there and it strikes the plate you start bending stuff up and the capacitor is pretty much gone um, and what other features do we need to know on the back side there are holes I've got some that are actually tapped but typically the holes are here for this spring right there and this spring holds tension on the uh, shaft and that's important because if the shaft moves even a little tiny bit you can see that there's very little clearance in between these plates and between the movable and the static plates very little clearance and yeah if this gets out of whack then the plates will drag and the and the capacitor shorted there is an adjustment screw back here don't usually i don't usually mess with it so what can i do with these multiple bank capacitors well one answer is that right now i'm working on an antenna tuner and on one side the antenna comes in and attaches to one bank and that is a resonant circuit to itself and then there's a another coil that is in line with the antenna and it, it is split by this so one side of this uh, capacitor goes to one side of the coil and the other side of, the, of this capacitor goes to the other side of the coil and when you tune these you're tuning both the antenna and that tank circuit to get a, a resonant circuit and yeah that's one way to tune an antenna so that's one way to use these another way is if you just need more capacitance you can actually just wire these two things together and you'll it adds up the capacitance so this is a 350 and a what did i say earlier 260 so yeah you get a five six uh, whatever that works out to be 610 uh 610 picofarad capacitor by uh, wiring them together here are two two bank capacitors and they're very similar the sizes are different and this one is a 360 in the front bank and this is also a 360 in the front bank the back bank on this one i've measured at about 250 and the back bank on this one is 180 so we have some value differences let's uh, rotate them on around this way we can see that the leads on this one go down and these are typically used to mount into the board these go sideways so a little different on the bottom this has holes but they're not tapped i guess they could be used for mounting and this one has no holes keep rolling on around and we have the standard the trimmer capacitors uh, individually for each bank this one has a nice brace on it to hold the frame more stable making it a little bit stronger on the front side we have the three mounting holes they are in a different pattern this is more of a standard pattern however i've found the holes come in different sizes so these two are the same size another one i have is the screw holes are much larger okay so three here uh, again the shafts are different and on the back side we can see let's refocus there we go on the back side we can see this one does not have a uh, tab for the uh, for the frame it does have three tapped holes which is nice this has two holes which are not tapped and there's one thing I neglected to compare let's go back here make sure we're in focus there we go uh, the this spring tension tab is just mounted in there loosely and it is using this hole right here to keep it from rotating this one is actually soldered in position so this would be the better way to do things you won't get like spurious signals because uh, this thing could actually be acting as a capacitor if it's not well grounded okay um, yeah that's about it for these two so let's look at some others and uh, see how they're different this one is very unusual it actually has a gear up here on the front 
and that gear is split into two. So it's two gears laying one on top of the other with a little spring that puts tension between them. And then the other part of the gear is right there on the shaft. And this ensures that there's no backlash when you turn the, turn the shaft back and forth. It makes sure that there's, uh, the gears are staying tight together. So kind of an interesting one. No idea what this one was for. Again, this I got brand new from a shop that was closing down. But this is a three bank and it has uh, on the bottom, it has two trimmers for the back side, nothing for the front side. And that's pretty much it. Um, so it must have uh, gone into some very specific item that uh, is heretofore lost to time and history. This is a four bank capacitor and you can see it has the flat cut in the shaft like I mentioned earlier. The unusual part of this one is that the last bank, so there's one, two, three, and this last bank has been shielded, so kind of different. Also, it has three trimmer caps and then the last one has none. Um, but otherwise, it's a you know, fairly standard four bank capacitor, one, two, three, and four like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at the next one. I think it's a five bank. Here is another four bank capacitor, but this has a couple unusual features that I thought uh, you might want to see. It's very typical in that there's a large bank, small bank, large bank, small bank, and it's kind of a little unusual in that it has only three trimmers and the last one has been left blank. Uh, this also has a nice bracing bar right here, which is good. But the most unusual feature of this is this has a two speed adjustment shaft. If I turn this one, you can see it moves rather slowly. But if I move this, it goes fast. So it has a coarse and fine adjustment. You can see the little knob, the hole in the little knob go flying past when I turn this. So yeah, it has a, uh, a geared system somehow. I do not, I've never figured out how this thing works. The little shaft passes up through the middle. I can't see any kind of gearing or anything inside there, but uh, it does what it does. It's <laughs> kind of interesting. One of these days I'll find a broken one and cut it open and and see how it works but right now i can't afford to uh just cut one up for uh for just my curiosity this is the biggest one i have in terms of number of banks this is one two three four five six seven so that makes it a little unusual it also has these tensioners here one two three four five i've never seen that uh, usually they just have one at the back and this one has five across here and they are all soldered into place. So somebody does not want any stray capacitance working their way in there or noise. Also, it turns this way. Most of them turn the other way. So uh, a little bit unusual. It has three trimmers on it right here. One, two, three, and they're all connected to the largest banks. What else? Let's see, flip it over. Uh, construction's a little bit different. I mean, they have these riveted uh, connections here and there are four mounting holes, but they're not threaded that I can see. No, they're not threaded. And that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a big thing. It'd be interesting to know what it was for. Okay, well, that's the last one. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your DIY electronics projects.